Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken, that's the legendary Iron Man Army of Two run. It is time to beat the game on the highest difficulty with only two soldiers permission and this is more uh, testing ground so to speak. Uh, finally Hogbite and Roby are ready which means I want to use all of their goodies. Look at that um, pimped out, nice little rifle, great Archon suit, uh, beautiful uh, colors by the way, Hogbite. Uh, doesn't look like much, but I can assure you there are a lot of psionic skills underneath the, that very calm but yet handsome uh, look. Uh, the two of them certainly are so far the strongest soldiers and I expect nothing but a really flawless mission here. So let's see how this is going to turn out. The two are built as a squad that can take an immense amount of beating and we haven't seen them in a while because they were always on training missions. Currently someone else is doing a covert ops uh, mission so might as well use it because um, they are not like expensive cars which you put into your garage and never drive them. They are there in order to be used so we are going to take a nice little look how strong this team is specifically after Renvin and um, Zirkim have shown quite a couple of uh, really, really strong showings in the last missions. Um, these two here now need to prove that they are still number one. We've invested so much into them, uh, it would be a shame if they wouldn't be. Good, let's go. Robin Hogbite just landed. And we got ourselves a double agent. Trooper. Menace one five. Target coordinates are locked in. Move to designated position and place the X4 charge. Let's use the trooper in order to scout out. What's happening? All right, time for us to go in a bit more aggressive almost. There we go, first tower. By the way, we could Icarus jump like right over here. Or now we're taking this high ground here, which isn't bad either because we have a lot of really nice um, line of sights. This here is probably the best position because you have immense line of sight two times high, high cover from uh, the left and uh, the right, so might as well move over it there. And since we don't have any time pressure, I am not going to use uh, any of our pressures. Cooldowns! Look at that. So if we were to move in, this here would be definitely one hit for both of them. Um, lightning... Um, Reflexes would prevent the Spectre from getting hit, but it's fine. I mean, we can do this here clearly um, and would immediately injure at least the Archon. No Alright, let's go. Oh, 
Blade Storm, Lightning Reflexes. Okay, so we could set up this skill. I think that's what we're going to do. Just out of curiosity, like how much damage would we deal? 14 to 16. If we're standing right next to it, uh, we would automatically kill it. So although I didn't want to use it, uh, we can't jump into the tower. Okay, gotcha. But what we can do is we can run and gun. And since the Icarus suit is so imbalanced that it allows us to just traverse up here, we are not even going to be spotted out, I think. There we go. Hi, what's up? By the way, I just learned rapid fire. Want to see how that works? Oh, yeah. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Setting up the Archon. Maybe not setting it up. I do have an idea though how we can still set it up. Uh, that could bring him down to 11. Yeah, not enough. So we need, need to take the 50-50. Alright, didn't work out, but that's fine, because Bladestorm will kill it. There's the extra focus, and let's bury. Oh, very nice. Uh, that could be a test fight to see how the two of them would deal with the Chosen. He's immune to melee, but he's not immune to other effects, so might as well double check how well we would deal against him. Right, let's move into cover. And let's move into cover. We were to take over the super heavy turret. What's our chance? 60% almost. I think we should try to do that. Of course, the moment that I propose to do that, we are unsuccessful. It would have been nice because the turret uh, gives a bit more uh, visibility plus extra additional shots. Um, a grenade would solve the whole tur turret issue. And this here would be the most straightforward play. Just charging in, almost. 
We are most likely going to pull something though. Here and up here, there could be more. So far everything is quite calm. Might as well keep it that way. Um, if we were to take a shot with four armor, it's just not worth it. Might as well move up and see if we can throw the grenade next turn. Hmm. I am tempted. But let's not do it for now. Alright, let's see. Theoretically they should uh, the tower should take shots at our exactly at our double agent because he's on low ground. I think it's not the worst idea to to go in. Let's give it a try. If we pull something, that's still fine. What's up, buddy? So if we were to take the shot, this here is probably going to kill it. Haywire protocol is still on recharge. Would be great to get the other tower, but that's unlikely to happen. Might as well pass on an overwatch. Uh, yeah, shall we really do that? Probably it's not a good idea. I'm going to wait with that. Instead, let's reload and kill the super heavy turret. So we can certainly throw a grenade next turn. Going for parry. Do I have to do everything myself? Let's see, is he going to summon something? Carried easy enough. We have a soldier down. Get him back on their feet on the double. So moving to here. Can still attack the chosen afterwards. Shortly take care. Um, of this trooper, because I think even if the trooper is technically not an XCOM, XCOM agent, he can still uh, extract information from him. This here should deal with the tower. Very nice. Tower is gone. 
No, we're not. He's immune to melee, but I want to have parry as an option. We just pulled something. I can see. We just pulled something. Oh, Lord. Wasn't aware that we we're looking into like all of the enemies at the same time, but that's a great option now to demonstrate how strong the team really is. First and foremost, let's parry. Good. And now, we were to capacitate or discharge. That would hit everyone here. We can also advance teamwork, which is the smarter choice. So, if we were to kick in with the Reaper... How could we deal enough damage to keep that going? Let me think. I mean, a Volt would be really nice to set the damage up. And then afterwards I can could continue dealing damage with the Reaper. thinking so vaulting here would hit everyone I would hit these three targets or these three so that wouldn't be the worst idea vaulting um, then afterwards I could uh, move over another action um, and we can activate Reaper, kill this guy, deal more damage here. Probably not enough to kill the uh, Gatekeeper though, but we could give it a try. So let's start with Volt. Certainly can use Ghost, uh, or could could have used Ghost, but we did not have a human corpse prior to this. So let's now use Reaper. This here begins to deal a lot of damage. Damage increased. Uh, we could hit yet another slash into this direction. Probably not going to kill him. Um, but it would deal damage against all of the targets. Um, another Volt could theoretically knock out uh, the Gatekeeper. An Iconic Storm would deal with most of uh, the enemies. Standing here would hit almost everyone short of uh, the Chosen.
we and uh, armor doesn't count so we would regenerate all of our um, focus which means everyone would die except the chosen and we would have a lot of focus regenerated so let's try this Here we go, Kamehameha! Menace one five, you're near the target position. Alright, I think it's fair to say that we fucked him up quite bad. Triple focus, just got another pack what should we try this time my cover will only hold so long they come for me Come on, summon something. Time to move. No? Something must be off. Yeah, something must be off. I like I like it. So if we were to land here... Or over here... No, over here is probably the right place. We could continue hitting everyone. This guy here needs to die. So I'm just wondering what's the best position to ambush him. This here is certainly good. Full cover is good as well. Again, still concerned about the gentleman down here. Um Yeah, I mean we can deal with those uh, two wannabes. It's not a big problem. If we were to capacitate or discharge, we could hit both of them for quite quite a bit of damage. We could move in, kind of land over here. That's dangerous. That's a dangerous game. Can capacitate or discharge from where we stand, and uh, we might as well give an extra eight protocol over to um, Renvan, uh, to Hawkbite. Could also give him eight protocol for for a threat assessment. That would work as well. It's probably not a bad idea, to be honest. This guy here needs to die. These guys here need to die. Specifically the priest. So 
So here is the deal. If we're moving up here, okay, let's take a look whom we can hit. Chosen, always a good target, no question. But I think we're going for the trooper just to set him up a bit. Nice little crit. Gets him down even further. Let's set up the priest. Thanks to our um, uh, advanced damage to pistols and advanced damage to plasma weapons. Even his weapons deal a lot of damage. I'm wondering, like that's not even bad against uh, the against the chosen. Eleven to twelve points of damage. Well, you know what? I mean, we could certainly do this here. And just kill him. Yeah, I think that's the right to play. Even if he goes into sustenance, um, we can blade storm him to death. Yeah, he goes into sustenance. So yeah, we can blade storm him to death next uh, next turn. So we're going for parry. No one can hit us. I think just logistically speaking, we might want to give it to Hogbite because he sees so many enemies at the same time. Might as well give him a bit of an Overwatch chance. Threat assessment is good. And I already mentioned Capacitator Discharge. This here hits everyone inside and will deal enough damage to at least get the shields uh, down. Plus it disorientates them, so next turn they are set up for a kill. Let's get it on already. Eager to strike me. Into full cover. And he's disoriented. He has almost zero chance to hit. He should trigger the overwatch shot now. I'm not sure why he didn't trigger the overwatch shot. Oh my god, he's so bad with his rifle. I'm close, but nobody's perfect. The only thing on the line here is your planet, Commander. No pressure. Icarus jump. What? How? Okay, that was... Definitely one of the more stupid the actions. I just want to Icarus jump uh, up there. Let's see if we can set him up. It's a nice little uh, bit of damage. Sixty-five percent chance to hit this guy. I think good enough. 
job. So overall, overall, we're hitting in melee. Like that's going to be a certain kill. I like the idea of ghost, but Currently, it really doesn't work. Dual strike here could be a thing. Almost in level range. So we have enough movements, uh, which means we have a free shot, and we can use this free shot in order to try to hit the shield bearer. Didn't work out, still fine. There we go. Repeater is definitely helpful. We're going to parry. The elders created you for this. Now it's time to This here is going to go into parry. Watch this. No one nice little sidearm shot. I like it. Let's see what you've come up with now. Okay, so let's by the way see if we can uh, kill him downstairs. Uh, the shield bearer without uh, using the full action of Hogbite. It would be an advantage in doing so. Because then Hogbite could summon his clone. The ghost. Probably will not uh, work out though. Yeah, almost enough, but almost is not enough overall. bit of healing so there's nothing wrong with having a third um, a third soldier like that is probably a summoning yep two further priests Oh nice, Guardian. We had a couple of extra shots happening. So we're triggering the Overwatch shot by moving first. Let's try to hit this guy. Oh nice, worked like a charm. Sustenance. Yep. And we can parry. We're giving ourselves. Are we giving. A, yeah, we're giving ourselves a protocol for the threat assessment. And the reload.
All right, that's a blade storm kill. The summonings drop some extra loot, which is good. Advanced scope and data pad. The data pad is helpful. So the parry isn't bad for a prolonged fight against him. I mean, if we were to regularly fight against him, right, then probably we would use Amplify a lot. I think we would not use Lightning Hands because that's for the sarcophagus. And the problem is that he can shoot back. So you wouldn't want to take low low chance shots. He's immune against melee, as you can see. So that, if anything, would just um, make him um, make him uh, move out of his position. Yeah, I think we should not engage him with that. Uh, with uh, this uh, combination. Most of my targets never get a chance to shoot back. You call that power? His regeneration also makes longer fights even worse. Yeah, being immune against it doesn't make it easier. Yeah, I think I made my choice. Although we can certainly fight him with this combination, I think it is incredibly more easy to do it with a setup where we are not fighting him with a melee character. So that worked out overall. A um, bit of reflection. Chosen certainly with his immunity to melee is a problem for us. I don't see here uh, that we can kill it. That we can kill it reliably with just uh, Roby taking shots. Also, he can pretty much select any target that he wants to uh, that he wants to attack. Yeah, we don't need to fight against the reinforcements. We don't need any more experience. Maybe for the loot, but even that is arguably not important. Okay, cool. Really solid uh, run uh, with the two. Got some extra ability points. Yeah, they certainly have proven that they are still the strongest team running into like a bunch of enemies and and then Hopbite is almost soloing every single one of them. That was impressive. 
our peacekeepers will stop at nothing to prevent further attacks by criminal elements such as the one that occurred today. The elders have total faith in our ability to overcome any and all threats to our peace. Good. Goes to show that the chosen are vulnerable. Six more days. We just have to figure out how to keep them down. The destruction of this facility marks an important step. Yeah, that's okay. We have ten more days until the uh, until the stronghold needs to be found. Your team is to be commanded. And we have cleansed yet another. Yet another facility. Still can't believe it's come to this. That is our good old black side facility. I like it. our current objectives based on the most recent findings. So also research uh, the shadow brain, uh, the uh, codex brain. Bit of storyline progression here. We've made initial contact with the resistance operatives working in this area, Commander. They're going to show us how to get into the Alien Forge facility. You just can't leave well enough alone, can you? Advanced stock, okay. Well. What we really need is intel, not necessarily an advanced stock. We have plenty of supplies, so that is no longer the problem. Uh, the shortage is intel. Although, did we just liberate the entire world, by the way? Yeah, <laughs> 16 contexts. I stand corrected, we don't need uh, intel unless we want to buy something from the black market. So we're actually fine. Um, I take a bit of, um, of an offense by still having the um, alien facilities around. There's nothing in particular here that or no reason why we need to do them. But yeah, on the other side, if they would be gone, it would be even easier. For Sector 15, West Asia. So might as well cleanse them before they can build up. And I think it's time for Dragonova plus Edgar Alien Poe. That is going to happen in the next mission. We had a quick run, I think. Next mission might be two of the facilities right back to back, just so that we're um, that we're getting them done. I thank you for uh, taking your time to watch, and uh, see you in the next uh, mission. Please don't forget to like it and leave a little comment down below. Thank you. Bye bye.